Welcome to our reflection for the third Sunday of Easter from Streatham Vale Baptist Church. On this third Sunday of Easter, it seems appropriate that we look at the third resurrection appearance of Jesus according to John's Gospel. Last week I mentioned that we shouldn't feel a sense of anticlimax after Easter day is over because Jesus is still alive and so we should be continuing to celebrate and rejoice because he is with us. However, it does raise the question, how should we live in the light of Easter? What impact does Jesus' resurrection have on our lives? This was a question that the disciples also had to consider. How would they live their lives after Jesus' resurrection? So I'm going to read from John chapter 21, verses 1 to 14. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple who Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment round him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish. They were not far from shore, about a hundred meters. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So, as I've just read, by this time of this event, we are told that the disciples had already met with Jesus, with the risen Christ, twice. And so they had now returned to Galilee. And I suspect that they were probably finding themselves at a bit of a loss. Although they knew that Jesus is alive, he wasn't with them in the same way as before. They weren't spending every moment with him, following him and learning from him as he taught the crowds. They weren't being in his presence and getting guided by him every moment. And so it kind of seems like they were left with this sort of empty space in their lives and without direction as to what they were supposed to do next. And so. Simon Peter decides to go fishing, to return to the familiar things, to the way of life he had known before meeting Jesus. I wonder if we can relate to this at all. When we first meet the risen Jesus and realise what it all means as we choose to believe in him and follow him, we feel this enormous sense of excitement and joy and we think to ourselves, our lives are never going to be the same again. But unfortunately, this excitement and fervour eventually dissipates and we become more complacent, more blasé about our faith. And we, like the disciples, tend to fall back into familiar patterns of behaviour and comfortable ways of being. We stop trying to live the distinct, distinctive radical lives that Jesus calls us to. And instead, we fit in with what everyone else does. We no longer choose to take risks for Christ, 
but instead we do what we can to stay in our comfortable little bubbles. The disciples went back to the jobs that they knew. They were highly experienced fishermen, having trained and worked in the trade for years before they met Jesus. And yet despite this, when they go out to fish that night, they do not manage to catch a single fish. Early morning dawns and we find the disciples sitting in a boat, exhausted, fed up, disheartened, perhaps even thinking, nothing we do seems to work. We follow Jesus, but now he isn't with us. Even though he returned from the dead, he's not with us as he was before. And now we can't even do the jobs we used to be so good at. I imagine we've all had times where we have experienced a similar sense of hopelessness and frustration. I know I certainly have. There have definitely been times in my life where I have met with God and had an amazing experience, learning from him and enjoying being in his presence. And then after the experience, I've had a low moment where it seems harder to hear God or to know which direction to go. And so, like Simon Peter, it is all too easy to go back to previous patterns of behaviour. And yet when we do these things without acknowledging God, without seeking his will, his direction, we find that those things are unable to satisfy or provide us with what we're looking for. And so we're left with that sense of frustration and hopelessness that I imagine the disciples must have felt on that early morning after an unsuccessful night of fishing. And so it is to this scene that Jesus walks in. The disciples don't recognise Jesus when he first calls out to them. Friends, haven't you any fish? We're not told why the disciples don't recognise him. Perhaps it's still dark or there is an early morning mist obscuring their view. Or perhaps they are so focused on their disappointment that they do not recognise who it is who stands before them. Jesus instructs them to throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Jesus tells the disciples to cast out their nets, even though they had been fishing all night with no success. However, the thing that is different this time is that Jesus is with them. Jesus is instructing them. And the result is they have a cast that is so numerous that they cannot haul the nets in. And I think this is a really powerful testimony to the fact that we can try to do things in our own initiative and in our own strength. And we find that we are unsuccessful. And yet when we are directed by God, he causes us to succeed. At the beginning of the story, the disciples had returned to Galilee and appeared to be lacking direction and guidance. They returned to the familiar normal patterns of life. But Jesus uses this, this experience to give them new direction. This miraculous catch of fish must surely have brought back memories of another incident similar to this, where they caught another miraculous catch of fish at Jesus' command. So I'm going to read from Luke chapter 5. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signalled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. 
for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee's, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything and followed him. So this account in Luke 5, but it tells the story of Jesus calling the first disciples by instructing them to cast their nets after having had a night of catching no fish. In Luke's gospel, this miraculous catch of fish comes just before Jesus calls the disciples to follow him. And Jesus says to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. And so surely this account, this story must have been in their memories so that when they, we have the story in John's gospel, Jesus uses this another story of a miraculous catch of fish to once again draw them out of their old lives to remind his disciples that Jesus is still calling them to follow him. Jesus is still saying to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. And Jesus also says that to us. He calls us to fish for people, to call others to come to know Jesus, just as he called us to know him. How has Jesus called us out of our old lives to follow him? Think back to that first time you encountered Jesus for yourself. How does that bring you encouragement now? How might it challenge you now? Have we found ourselves sliding back into the familiar ways of life, back into the old patterns of behaviour? Take opportunity to look up and see Jesus. Give him the opportunity to do miracles in your life as he invites you to follow him. Remember how he calls to us. See how he calls to us now and let God transform your life. Amen.